Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today with six key trends for autumn 2023 and the fabrics and patterns you can sew them up in. I'll link everything below and you'll also find a link to our newsletter for a weekly dose of sewing inspiration. So let's get started with the trends. The first one I want to talk about is heralded as quiet luxury or foundation pieces. What does that mean exactly? Well, what we're talking about here is mixing your casual, practical, comfortable clothes and then adding a little bit of tailoring to elevate the look, which I am like so in love with this idea. I am so in love with this look. Um, one of the looks I'm wearing now, and I'll show you in a minute, um, but also another alternative that I really liked. It was all about, a lot of the looks were about a trench coat. Um, so you had things like wide leg jeans with a tailored shirt and a trench coat and trainers. So you've got those wide leg jeans and the trainers for the casual bit of the outfit, but then you elevate the look with the smart shirt and the uh, trench coat. But the other one that I really loved and I am all gonna be all over because it's comfortable and practical, <laughs> but stylish, was the leggings with a hoodie and then a trench coat. But basically the trench coat is really, really important and a great thing to have in your wardrobe. I've had this one. This is one I actually bought from a shop um, when I was going back to work after I had my first child and he's now 12. So it is definitely an investment piece that will keep on coming back. Um, so I thought, well, why not, you know, make one? And it seems like a big task and it seems like a bit of a, um, you know, an undertaking. But I think a couple of things to mention here. I was really inspired this year by the sewing bee. They made a trench coat in one of the episodes and I thought if they can whip one up in that amount of time, if you're doing it from, from the comfort of your own home, you know, surely it's a, it's a doable project. Um, but also I think this time of year is great for just embracing the so slowing movement. So really focusing on taking your time, get, making projects you can get your teeth into you know we spend a lot more time indoors at this time of year so it's the perfect time to really stretch those sewing skills so the pattern I chose for this was the Isla trench coat by named patterns which runs in a size 4 to a 28 it's got all the classic trench coat design features you would expect um, it's got storm flaps on the front it's got a storm flap on the back um, I think it's got welt pockets um, I haven't got that in the description here. Oh, she, yeah, welt pockets, yeah. It's got the belt, um, it's got the little tabs on the um, sleeves as well. So it's got all of those classic features and I think would be a really lovely project to get your teeth into for autumn. And it would sew up in our Sevenberry cotton twill beautifully. This fabric isn't waterproof though, so if you did want to make a waterproof one, you'd either have to treat this fabric um, or you could buy a waterproof fabric. Um, but yeah, this cotton twill is a beautiful um, match for that pattern. And yeah, I said I'd just show you quickly what I'm wearing because I'm wearing this particular trend today. Um, so I'm wearing a white shirt that I made embracing the so slowing movement. And I'm gonna be doing a video on this shirt and also another video on so many ways to style a classic white shirt like this. But then I've got my trench coat on and then I've got some wide leg jeans and my favourite pair of my favourite trainers. So I've got that sort of smart, casual look going on, which ticks the boxes of that particular trend. So the next trend I wanted to share with you, um, and it's worth mentioning here, I'm a little bit sad to see that this endorphin dressing movement that we've seen in recent years post COVID, all about bright colours, um, seems to have died a bit of a death this year and we seem to be going back to more monochrome and the darker hues for autumn winter this year. However, there is some um, beautiful bright colours that we are seeing coming through and one of those is red. So red is super, super popular this season. Um, red everything, red shirts, blouses, trouser suits, um, you name it, red is there. Um, I, from the images and the ideas I was looking at, I thought a really nice way to introduce a bit of red to your wardrobe and a pop of red is just to make a red blouse. 
and we actually have we've had lots and lots of new fabrics come in i found a new fabric supplier and um, we've got some beautiful ex designer dead stocks fabrics from france germany italy um, really lovely quality fabrics that I've, I've managed to source from a new provider um, so and one of those is a beautiful red um, like satiny poly ex designer fabric um, but unfortunately it hadn't come in in time for this video which i'm disappointed about um, but by by the time it gets released hopefully it will be up on the website but we have got a couple of other red alternatives that I could share with you um, and I thought yeah I wanted to make the patina blouse which is by the Friday pattern company I've made it before for those of you who watch our videos if you look back through there is a video reviewing that pattern by me um, but it's a fantastic modern gorgeous blouse pattern that would have been perfect for this but that is out of stock until November so I couldn't include that either but I did did find a lovely alternative which is the Geneva v-neck blouse by Liesel & Co. Um, just a very simple clean um, v-neck button-down blouse with different sleeve options and it also includes cup sizes for A stroke B cup C and D stroke uh, D cup so great for fitting there I'm not going into all the size details in the trends video everything if you want more details on any of these patterns or fabrics just click the links below you'll find everything there um, but I thought the Geneva blouse would look really pretty sewn up in one of our other X designer dead stocks. This is a poly um, and it's a white background with a really pretty red floral print on it. So I thought if you don't want to fully embrace full on red, um, that is a nice um, alternative. But then also if you are up for some more red, um, you would prefer a fully red background, you could use some of this Visco Chalet fabric, uh, which I made a dress in this year. Uh, really beautiful, lovely, vibrant red, and I think that blouse would look great in that too. The next trend I wanted to share with you was uh, winter florals, dark florals. This seems to have been heralded. It was heralded in quite a few places where I was reading up on it as, you know, nude trends, these moody florals, dark florals. I don't feel like it's particularly new. I feel like it's been around pretty much every winter for a long time. Um, but I think there's a reason for that. And I think that's because um, who doesn't love a dark floral? I do. I know there will be people who don't, obviously. Um, but I personally really love them. I think they're just really sort of... Um, romantic they make me think of those sort of warm cozy winter sort of vibes um, so I can see why they keep coming back I saw ditzy prints I saw large prints um, there was lots of dresses that were still feminine and floaty with ruffles and things but definitely more fitted silhouettes um, I saw blouse style shirts sewn up in dark florals so um, still floaty and fluid but with some structure um, and yeah lots of the dresses also had a sexy thigh slit on them as well so I chose a dress and a blouse pattern the dress pattern is McCall 7971 um, which runs up to a size 22 you've got different versions and options on this um, you've got the sexy thigh slit midi length version which I thought really nailed this trend and a fitted bodice with waist and bust starts you've got options for a sleeveless version shorter skirts different sleeves little flutter cap flutter sleeves a short sleeve so I definitely thought you could use that to nail the dark floral trend and I've got two different dark floral fabrics again these are X designer dead stocks that we've sourced one of which I know is from my favorite one of my favorite shops but I'm not allowed to say which one it is um, but basically they're left over from the manual manufacturing of um, the clothes they're left over and that's why they're ex-designer dead stocks um, but this is the first one this is a smaller print it's a lovely weight it's it's quite a, it's a good weight for dresses or trousers um, but it's still got that lovely fluid movement it's on a black background and it's got this pretty sort of white floral print I thought that would work brilliantly and was very very beautiful um, and then 
The other alternative, this is the one that I know is from one of my favourite shops. Um, I just love this one. So it's a bigger print, which is nice to see as well, because I think we've seen a lot of Ditsy prints in recent seasons. And again, this is a lovely quality X Designer dead stock. It's got a really soft handle on the wrong side. It's almost like a satin feel, not quite as silky as that, but it's definitely got a silky-ish feel on the wrong side. Um, again, a really good weight for a dress like that, but still very fluid and got really good drape and movement, as you can see there. And I just love that floral print, that black background, and then those striking um, large floral print on there. So that's what I chose for McCall's 7971. And then for the dark floral blouse trend, I chose Butterick um, 6856, which has got, it's, it's um, designed for fluid fabrics like viscose and that sort of thing. Um, but it's got some of the shirt sort of structured detail. So it's that nice mix between the fluid and the structured. Um, so it's got a granddad collar, a button down front, you've got the option for patch pockets, you can do button down patch pockets or just plain patch pockets. There are bust starts for a bit of shaping um, and then you've got options for long sleeves with cuffs, button down cuffs. You've got the option for putting a little, I um, can't remember the name, but you know when you turn a sleeve up and button it up. Um, sorry, can't remember that. Tell me in the comments. I know you always do. You always put me back on track, guys. Thanks for that. Um, but yeah, I think this would work really well. It runs up to a size 24. Um, and I've always liked this pattern. It came out a few, probably a few years ago now, and I haven't got around to making it, but I think it's really lovely. Um, and I thought it would look great sewn up in this dark floral ditzy fabric that we've got and I cannot remember I think this might be a Pima cotton lawn so a really high quality um, cotton lawn yeah it feels like that it doesn't feel like it's a viscose because we have had some lovely viscose um, prints in as well um, but as I said all the details everything's linked below the patterns the fabrics that you'll find them all below so you can get full details there um, but yeah this is beautiful quality um, I'm pretty sure it is a Pima cotton lawn and I thought that would work really well for that blouse Next, we are on to tailoring. That's the next trend. So tailoring is very much um, on trend again this season. So again, similar to the sort of trend I spoke to you about at the beginning, it is tailoring. So you're talking, we're talking things like waistcoats, um, trouser suits, um, shirts, definitely shirts have been so popular for so many seasons now and I am fully on board with the shirt trend. I just love it. Um, I never ever used to wear shirts and I've started wearing them and I can't get enough so I've made this one. <laughs> um, and yeah it's just that sort of mixing mixing that casual with the smart again so I saw things like wide leg trousers with a waistcoat but then sneakers um, or um, a blazer with wide leg jeans perhaps so you've got that blazer and shirt tailored element with the wide leg jeans like the, the look I'm wearing now um, and the pattern I chose I'll show you uh, my version of it first but yeah let's just take the trench coat off and you can see my version here this is Simplicity 9709 I've got it tucked in it's an oversized shirt um, and I like it tucked in with these high-waisted wide leg jeans but also I'm going to do a styling video on this for you because actually it's so versatile and you can style it so many different ways I'm just untucking it I wouldn't wear it untucked with these wide leg jeans myself but I'm just untucking it to give you an idea of um, you know how it sort of falls and how it fits um, but yeah this is just such a brilliant brilliant make it was actually for a shirt as well super easy to sew but I'll give you all those details when I do the proper um, make video um, but yeah that was the pattern I chose for this tailoring because I just think a shirt you can combine it with so many different things so I chose it's Simplicity 9709 it really is an easy to sew shirt it probably 
I had it done just grabbing an hour here, an hour there. I had it done in uh, just over a week, probably. Um, yeah, so it's a great pattern. It also come. there's also 9708, which goes up to a much um, bigger size range. This one goes up to a size 20, but the other one, I think it might go up to like a 32 maybe. So really size inclusive, really versatile brilliant to have in your wardrobe and I sewed it up in our, this is the Dashwood Pop fabric that I sewed it up in um, which I think sometimes it is used as a quilting cotton but actually it's a lot softer um, than your Kona cotton or those sorts of quilting cottons it's great for the, a shirt like this and I, th I wonder if it's called pop because it's a poplin because that's what it feels like and that's what a lot of the shirts were um, that I found in my research a lot of them were made from cotton poplin some of them were from linen um, we've got a linen cotton mix white fabric on the site as well so you've got that option as well and then the other thing that I saw lots of in the tailoring trend was the wide leg trousers they are still here to stay um, I've just invested in a pair of wide leg jeans I'm really glad I did that I haven't got time to make everything obviously so I do still buy occasional pieces but as you've seen with the trench coat and the leather jacket I keep on bringing back I take tend to buy things that are sort of classic that I will wear for years to come um, but for the wide leg trousers there's a Vogue pattern 1958 which I adore um, they are wide leg trousers with pleats at the um, coming down from the waist like not I don't think it's a box pleat but they're quite big exaggerated pleats which give a lovely fit and shape I think there's a fly front zip and a waistband it runs up to a 24 but I just think these trousers are awesome I think they're so stylish and just nail that wide leg tailored trouser trend and I thought actually you could use our dashwood pop in the black to just create a pair of classic black wide leg trousers again something timeless and classic that you'd probably have in your wardrobe for years and years to come the next trend I want to share with you is absolutely everywhere I am seeing this in real life on the internet everywhere and it is the denim midi skirt who knew who knew that this would be such a popular item i think it sort of started in the spring summer time and now it's going firmly into autumn winter and literally every time i do the school run i see somebody wearing one and i think they just look so stylish um so people are, and, and they're so versatile again another classic piece to have in your wardrobe that is so versatile i've seen people wearing them with trainers um, like these Adidas, my Adidas Sambas that I showed you earlier, they would be perfect. And then like a fitted knit, like a turtleneck. Um, I've seen people wearing them with little ankle boots. I've seen people wearing them with knee high boots from a dressier look and again, a nice fitted knit. Um, I've also seen people wearing them with t-shirts, blouses, leather bomber jackets or biker jackets. It really does feel like such a versatile thing. Um, and again, you know, really wearable, but also so, you know, I love sewing a bit of denim. I love doing the top stitching. I love slowing down and doing that mindful, methodical top stitching. You know, can I have a lot of fun with that. Um, so, yeah, I think another great pattern and, and another great project, sorry, for the autumn. The pattern I chose was McCall's 8149. Um, it's got three different lengths. Um, it would be view C I would go th for that nails that midi length. You could always lengthen it if you wanted it even a little bit longer. It's got a vent at the front. Um, it's got a fly front zip and waistband with a button pockets. Um, you've also got an option for a shorter version with um, a double ended zip as well. So lots and lots of different options with that one, but definitely nails that trend perfectly. And it runs up to a size 32 as well. So really size inclusive. You do, you've got the yoke on the back as well and patch pockets on the back if you want them. So all those classic um, features you would expect on a denim skirt. And I just chose one of our classic sort of denims um for that i thought this one would be great it's just a classic sort of denim um color so yep i thought that would work really well and again be one of those timeless pieces you would wear again and again and then finally 
The last trend I wanted to share with you was checks. So there's lots of checks out there this year, whether this is a nod to Vivian Westwood perhaps, um, but they're definitely a strong trend in bright colors, in unusual color combinations. Um, if you wanna do this trend really easily, just buy a check scarf. There were lots and lots of those on the catwalks. Um, but other than that, think sort of Tweedy um, or Tartan, checked skirts, they were really popular, mini skirts with turtlenecks um, or a check jacket as well is another alternative um, so the pattern I chose was McCall's 8370 which gives you the option for a really cute tailored jacket without any fastening so making it slightly easier it's got princess seams for a good fit um, obviously a project again to get your teeth into and slow down with um, but it also includes a really cute skirt pattern as well mini skirt pattern so I thought if you're not up for the jacket just yet you could always make the skirt build your confidence come back to the jacket at another date um, it runs up to a size 24 and the fabric I chose for that one is one of our coating or suiting fabrics um, and it is an unusual colour check it's got like a lovely turquoisey running color running through it and then a classic black and white um, and i thought that would look really pretty sewn up into that so i hope you've enjoyed all of that today as i said at the start of the video everything's linked below you can sign up for our newsletter below um, if you like what you see today please like and subscribe and i'll look forward to seeing you next time